In our last two videos, we talked about how to use the percentage of completion method and the completed contract method for recognizing revenue when we're talking about a long-term contract. So with something like a construction contract, uh, we're building a bridge, that was the example we talked about. And because it's long-term, you have the option of either recognizing revenue throughout the periods. In our example, it was three years, 2017 to 2019. You can recognize a little revenue in each period or the completed contract method, you say, look, I'm just going to wait till the project is completed and recognize all the revenue in the final year when I've completed the contract. So we can easily think and say, oh, wow, it's, it's easy to understand. We're recognizing a little bit in each period for a percentage of completion, and then we're, we're booking it all at the end for a completed contract, and we're going to have different profit, different effect on net income in each period based on that. But before we kind of get into the numbers and the differences, I'd just like to review, especially in case you didn't watch those last couple of videos, just kind of some of the, the key differences between these two methods. So in our example, we talked about that we had a $20 million, con $20 million contract we've been awarded to build a bridge. It was going to take three years to complete the bridge. We initially estimated it would be $15 million to, to do the bridge, but it ended up being $16 million. So we had some changes uh, throughout. Now, when we look at the three years, we kind of set up, we have this table where we look at the costs incurred at a certain point in time. So at the end of 2017, we'd incurred $3 million, and then 2018, $8 million, and then 16, the full mil, uh, $16 million at the end of the contract. And then we took that, the costs incurred at a certain point, divided it by the estimated total costs remaining at a certain point, and got a percentage that we were complete with the project, how far along we were. And then we use that to recognize some of the revenue, right? So in the first period, we say 20% of that $20 million uh, revenue is going to be uh, recognized. So if we look at what the revenue was uh, under percentage of completion, here we've got percentage of completion. Should have wrote that there. My apologies. Percentage of completion. And then we've got completed contract method. So under percentage of completion, with that $4 million in 2017, that's 20% of the progress we've made on this, on this contract, 20% of that $20 million. So we recognize that, but we don't have any journal entry at all for completed contract method. In 2017, 2018, there's just nothing. And we're going to book that full $20 million at the end. So we go ahead and we have actually, if we think about the journal entries, that we have for each part, we actually have a lot of the same journal entries, right? So we're, we're each each time complete a contract or percentage of completion. We're going to have an entry where we debit construction and process and credit some payable or credit cash for the actual costs that we incur with the construction, right? So in 2017, we have three million in actual costs. We debit CIP and we credit payable or credit cash, however you you know whatever happened. So then we also have the billings. Right? So the billings, we just say, how much did we bill the customer? That's going to be the same whatever method you're using. So we're just going to debit receivable, for example, 2017, $2.5 million, and credit billings for $2.5 million. And then the cash collected, that doesn't change under either method you know, either. So that, that's the same. We're just going to debit cash for $2 million and credit receivable for $2 million in 2017. So all these, a lot of these entries are exactly the same, whether you use percentage of completion or complete a contract. Where the differences come in is when we have those extra entries for percentage of completion, where we're making entries to, to allocate expense and revenue in the periods of 2017 and 2018, because we haven't finished the contract yet. We don't make these entries when we do complete a contract, but when we do the percentage of completion, we're saying, look, we're going to recognize a little bit of expense here, a little bit of revenue here, a little bit of expense here, a little revenue here, and a little in period three. So we're, we're, we're kind of smoothing it out along the life of the contract, whereas completed contract, it's just all going to get dumped at the end, right? Completed contract, we just say, look, we have revenue of $20 million at the end of 2019, and we have expenses of $16 million, so we get $4 million profit all the way at the end and then we just zero out the billings account and zero out the CIP account right that's all you do with complete a contract and there's nothing happening in 2017 2018 in terms of revenue or expenses or anything like that so when we look at okay well how will this actually affect 
And, and also another thing to bear in mind is the CIP account here is actually that entry is not being made either, right? That's the plug with this expense and revenue here. You can think about it as like the gross profit and so forth. So that's why when I actually zero out the CIP under completed contract, this, this is completed contract entries here. I should have mentioned that, my apologies. So when we zero out the CIP for 16 million, uh, actually if we were zeroing it out on a percentage of completion, we're zeroing out for 20 million. And the reason it was more for percentage of completion is we were actually adding that that debit to CIP each time for that that gross profit that we were having that plug with the expense and the revenue so basically it was the gross profit we were making on the contract so now we can look, kind of come back and look and, and again I encourage you to watch those videos if you haven't I don't want to go through all this up this would be a really long video if we do but bear in mind that if we're thinking about the effect on earnings and we really want to look at this as profit right so profit we think about the earnings of our firm if we do percentage of completion we're actually smoothing the earnings right so we're, we're wrecking a million here a million here two million here that's what we're doing we're, we're smoothing but with completed contract we're dumping it all at the end at four million now I'm not criticizing one method or the other uh, but firms have an option to use both methods currently and so it's just important to understand that when a firm is using completed contract it's not going to smooth the profits as much you might have more uh, where you have one big year where they just finished a really large bridge or something like that and all of a sudden it, it looks like a completed contract it almost looks like hey look there's really nothing going on in 2017 and 2018 if this is the only project the firm had an investor might be like hey what what is happening here are we doing any business and reality is all of a sudden uh, you, you've, you've been doing business all along, but you just recognize that profit all the way at the end of the contract. So it's kind of, it, it's not as smooth with completed contract or percentage of completion. It's a little bit easier to account for, but the earnings aren't going to be as smooth. They're all just going to happen and get dumped at the end uh, when you go ahead and finish the, 